all right guys uh, so in this lecture we are going to continue from mcq number 11 all the way to mcq number 20 okay this is the 2002 paper of as chemistry okay the, uh, the link to the first 10 mcqs have been given in the description you may check that out okay uh, let's continue okay so which curve is obtained if the rate of the reaction is plotted against the time for an autocatalytic reaction a reaction in which one of the products catalyzes the reaction okay guys well it's easier to just learn the curve of such reactions okay basically for autocatalytic reaction this is actually a theoretical curve and it's it looks like option c okay the graph keeps on increasing until it reaches a maximum value after reaching the maximum value it decreases back okay and does not approach zero so option c is correct okay i would suggest just learn this graph for autocatalytic reaction okay it it doesn't change it it stays the same now uh, mcq number 12 which species represented by the following formulae has the largest radius okay to check out the radius first of all we need to check out its placement in the periodic table Phos uh, phosphorus and chlorine and argon they are in period three potassium is in period four but potassium is all the way to the left hand side in the periodic table so for instance if this is our periodic table over here and potassium is right over here and phosphorus and chlorine are over here phosphorus followed by chlorine then argon okay now the trend of radii is that it actually increases down the group and across the period it actually decreases okay it decreases across the period but the thing is that over here we've got phosphorus and this phosphorus is actually uh, is negatively charged it's the phosphide ion that we have this phosphide ion will have the greatest uh, the greatest radius because uh, it would have the largest radius because of its negatively charged electrons okay it has the greatest number of electrons uh, basically more electrons than the protons in the nucleus so the effective nuclear attraction experienced by each of the electrons is uh, has changed okay so basically if we compare phosphorus with chlorine and argon the phosphorus will have a larger radius anyways following the normal trend as we know that across the period it decreases right the phosphorus will have a larger radius than chlorine chlorine will have a larger radius than okay not argon okay because argon is actually a noble gas and its radius is different but if you compare the phosphide ion phosphide ion in case of phosphide ion the radius of the phosphide ion is greater than argon because this in this case the phosphide ion has greater number of electrons than the number of protons present in the nucleus of the phosphorus and secondly uh, due to this the effective nuclear attraction on each electron decreases and so each electron experiences a weaker nuclear attraction therefore the electron density it actually expands why why isn't potassium uh, larger well that's because potassium first of all it's it's a positively charged ion and positively charged ion means that it it actually has lost its elect its outermost shell Okay, due to the loss of the shell, it will have a smaller size as compared to the phosphorus. Okay, therefore option A is the best option over here. Okay, which of the following oxides is unlikely to dissolve in aqueous sodium hydroxide? Okay, aqueous sodium hydroxide is basic, right? So, anything that's basic will not dissolve in it. Okay, so silicon dioxide is acidic, it will react. Sulfur dioxide again acidic will react. Al2O3 is amphoteric, so it will react in both sodium hydroxide and with acids as well. Only MgO is the correct answer. An element of the third period from sodium to sulfur is heated in chlorine. Okay, this product is purified and then added to water. Resultant solution is found to be neutral. 
okay so which of these uh, which of them is the element okay if we talk about sodium sodium forms sodium chloride the normal the common table salt and this table salt gives us a neutral solution of ph approximately 7 okay a is the correct answer which equation represents the reaction that occurs when calcium nitrate is heated strongly well calcium nitrate this is actually a, uh, an equation directly from the theory whenever group 2 nitrates are heated they always produce their corresponding oxide. They produce nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. Okay, two moles of nitrogen dioxide, half moles of uh, oxygen, and they are burnt. Okay, like this. So, if you look at option D, it's actually the same equation, but they've multiplied the entire equation by two. Okay, so you'll get option D as the correct answer. Okay, this M just generally represent any group 2 matter. So, yeah, that's the answer, option D. Moving on to the next MCQ. All right, during electrolysis of brine in a diaphragm cell, chlorine, hydrogen, and sodium hydroxide are produced. Okay, what is their molar ratio of these products? Diaphragm, okay, brine is concentrated sodium chloride. Okay, if you have concentrated sodium chloride aqueous solution, you get sodium ions and chloride ions, and you get H positive and OH negative ions in the aqueous solution. Now, since it's concentrated solution, so on the anode, you'll get chlorine gas. Okay, and on the cathode, you'll get hydrogen gas. Now, you need to balance the equations because they are actually asking us the molar ratios. Now, if uh, sodium chloride gives sodium and chloride and water gives hydrogen and OH negative ions. Now, first of all, the chloride ions, they'll give off chlorine gas. And so to balance this, you will need to have two moles of chloride ions. So place a two over here in this equation. So this two over here means that you will need two moles of sodium hydroxide. And that's enough for your uh, question because only option B has uh, the sodium hydroxide moles as the two. So B is the correct answer. Move on to 17. Okay, which statement explains the observation that magnesium hydroxide dissolves in aqueous ammonium chloride but not in aqueous sodium chloride? Well, ammonium chloride, this is actually a question directly from the uh, syllabus as well that when alkalis are heated with ammonium salts they always give off ammonia gas well the reason behind that is because this is a base right magnesium hydroxide is a base or an alkali it will react with ammonium it will react with ammonium ions in here and they'll give off ammonia gas so base reacts with an acid and therefore this ammonium ions they actually act as acids in here okay so D is the uh, best option. Sulfur dioxide is an important food preservative. What property makes the sulfur dioxide useful in this role? Okay, sulfur dioxide is actually a reducing agent, right? So it prevents the food from getting oxidized. So that's why it's uh, it's actually a food preservative. So it's a reducing agent. Okay, so that's why it's uh, it's the best. It's used to preserve the food. Okay, the anesthetic halothane over here, it can be uh, industrially prepared through this pathway. Which type of reaction is occurring in stage 2? Okay, if you look at stage 2, uh, one of the hydrogen atoms have been substituted by a bromine atom. So this is just, this isn't the substitution of the chlorine itself, but it's rather the substitution of the hydrogen by the bromine. So it's actually free radical substitution because the hydrogen atom is being replaced by the bromine atom. Last MCQ of this video. Okay, which set of alcohols currently show primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols? All right, to identify primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohol, well, primary is that in which the carbon to which the OH is bonded must be directly bonded to one other carbon and two hydrogens. Okay, this is the uh, what a primary alcohol looks like. Okay, so if you look at option D, this is a primary, this is primary, this is also primary, this is also primary. Okay, all of them, the first alcohol is primary. Now, secondary is the one in which the the carbon to which the OH is bonded is directly bonded to two other carbon atoms and it, it's only in option D okay and in option C as well but uh, not in in here not in okay you do have a secondary alcohol in here as well now tertiary is basically that in which the carbon to which the OH is bonded is directly bonded to three other carbon atoms and it's only in option D so option D is the best choice okay thank you so much and uh, rest of them will be covered in the next video